I'd like to have a word of prayer. We'll begin this morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Yeshua ben Yahweh, the Astro Logos, the subject of the written word, and the love of our life, and our coming Redeemer and King. <clears throat> and so today, thank you for the privilege of opening your word to see more about you. That's not what this is about. I don't want anything at all to do with it. So I thank you for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you'll notice in your chat room, <clears throat> of course, now, those of you that are watching this recording, I don't think that you, do you see, do you see the chat room in the recording? I don't think so. Anyway, I but I've written, I've written our new uh, codes for our <laughs> sessions um, for next week. Uh, and then I'm going to continue to do sessions uh, to help you understand how to do other people's profiles. The primary a goal that we have in finishing here uh, by the end of this month is for you to understand your profile primarily. And if you remember, those were the goals that we set out with is for number one, for you to get it, for you to understand what it means and how to interpret it for you. And then uh, in our last class, we had almost everyone that graduated and finished the final exam <clears throat> that continued on with a practicum study of how to do other people's profiles. And then finally, to receive authorization to use level two and three on our computer program, whenever we determine that you have the proficiency to do it, uh, to interpret first guys. So this is going to be really exciting. And today, I had asked you guys to make sure that you had Stellarium downloaded. So just so I can know this, um, for those of you that's got your camera up, you can give me a thumbs up if you got it loaded or a thumbs down if you didn't. And the rest of you, I'd like to know that from you too, if you got it downloaded, okay? Got Jasmine, Doug, okay. Pete got his, Liz, you, Elizabeth, okay. All right, I need Monica, Anuja. I'm using the web version. So you got it, Monica? Yes, the web version. Great. Okay, well, <clears throat> if you download the one on your laptop or on your computer, rather than the web version, you'll always have access to it. You can save it on your hard drive and it'll work if you can't get online. And that's a very big deal um, if you saved on your hard drive. So, you know, and yeah, yeah, you can get the, the mobile one, but the other one's better. Okay, then. <clears throat> well, in the workbook on page um, 109 <clears throat> is a Christological profile worksheet. Now, I later condense this down to the one that you have in your Discover Your Destiny book, one of the first books I gave you. But this has got a good summary in it because it's got a summary of all the planets. And then one page over, you have the summary of the constellations. So what we want to do then Today for you is to enter in your birth date and then to locate <clears throat> the planets where they were in your birth sky. And we want to do this by Stellarium, not by our computer program on our website, though that can be done as a means to double check what you found. So <clears throat> I want to say this about level one on a computer program well i got it on my mind um level one does not have the location of the moon and uh, <clears throat> if people want the location of the moon and don't want to do anything else but level one they can calculate it 
through the book on Discover Your Destiny. And um, quite a handy little trick that's in that book that shows people the location of the moon. But I think the location of the moon is very, very important. And, um, you know, I, I see Doug nodding his head there, but, you know, Doug and Barbie and I, um, we started doing this before we had the computer program. We were just using Stellarium. And uh, that's what I want you to learn how to do. You know, um, I think learning how to use the program without learning the basics of it, of Stellarium and, and the astronomy of it would be like um, uh, starting to study your multiplication tables and you, know, and you didn't know addition and subtraction. You know, so uh, <clears throat> these are just fundamental things that we need to know. And I want to continue to encourage all of you to memorize the 12 constellations and the 36 decans and the order of them. Um, okay, so Barbie just texted me since we both logged in again, the Zoom meeting ID and the passcode that you typed in was gone. So I typed it in the chat box now. Okay, so if you look Barbie typed in the meeting codes for the next several weeks. 881993. What's that? You got to do that top one again, Barbie. You got that. You got a four. Can't, I can't redo it. Um, if you go down one, okay. another line, it's there. Okay, 4039. There you go. Okay. With the All password. Right, yeah. Okay. And then there's the password. There's a 90353. So just that's a little. Um, administrative stuff that we're dealing with here this morning. Um, and where, where is the chat, 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 chat? There it is. If okay. on your bottom menu bar key, that's got a little green got button there. You can click on it. I see it. And it's there. Okay. Three. So, <clears throat> oh, well, my intent, my intention for today is to show you how to operate Stellarium a little more efficiently and um, put up some of your birth skies and help you to locate the planets in your birth sky and also the decans, okay? I want you to understand that. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna start just doing these. Um, This morning, I um, had to reconfigure some stuff on Stellarium. Um, and I wanted to show you a little bit about how to do that. And um, so in your menu bar across the top, in your, in your menu keys, your F1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s, if you hit F4, it will take you to the viewing of your screen. You can also get there by going over here to sky and viewing options windows, the same thing. F4 is a shortcut key. But if you look at this, the first category over here is the sky. So, you know, I had in my sky, I had the stars turned on. And it was horrible. I couldn't see anything because we've got, there's so many stars in there. So I turned the stars off for the purpose of um, these profiles. Now, um, these are the SSOs are the celest uh, solar system objects. And so here in this one, uh, and you can go along with your Stellarium while I'm doing this, it says, solar system objects. Uh, I like to show trails, but only whenever I do retrogrades. So show planetary nomenclature and then show planetary markers. Scale the moon, okay? Now DSO is deep space objects and they've got galaxies, active galaxies, all down here filtered by type. And you know, I, whenever I'm doing profiles, I just soon not see any of them. Um, 
because they just sort of clutter it up and get in the way, okay? Now, going back, I'm going to hit F4. Now, markings, look at this. So here's your markings. Now, <clears throat> uh, there's also markings down at the bottom of the page here. Let me show you this. In this bottom menu down here, this, these are constellations. And that's all the figures disappearing. And here's the equatorial grids. And then this is the celestial center, which ends up centering basically. Come on, man. Well, it's at a different time, anyhow. But down here, these are equatorial grids, but it, it really divides it into north and south pretty well. Um, you know, I actually think I have my LMCI <clears throat> um, planisphere up here. I'm going to get to that in just a moment and talk to you about that. Um, but over here, still back in Stellarium, you have um, in this top menu bar on this side, you have your location window. Um, and that allows you to put where you are at that particular time. Like um, if you're in India, you click that and it'll, act it'll actually calculate for you um, what things will be seen at that time. You know, there's a great revelation that I think would be good to share with all of you even right now. Um, for example, if you're trying to see uh, massings of planets at sunrise or sunset, it's very difficult to see because of the blocking of the light of the sun. Um, And most all massings of planets happen during those times of the day. What I was going to tell you is, if you're watching, if we're watching, for example, <clears throat> a massing of planets in Virgo, and we have an hour to see it before it goes down at sunset, they'll, you, you guys will see the same thing in India, but you will have seen it a half a day earlier or 12 hours earlier, but it will be in the same place, in the same location for us in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. Now it's different if you're in the Southern Hemisphere and um, some of you in India, there's some of you from Mumbai, there's some of you in Chennai. And sometimes the viewing is different according to North and South, but according to timing, it's the same for everybody. So whenever the wise men saw his star rise in the east in Jerusalem after Jesus was born, everybody in the world could see it rise in the east right at sunup because we all see the same thing just at different times. That's what I wanted to tell you, okay? So it won't look different from you. It won't look different. It, it'll all look the same for all of us as long as we have the time down. Um, but that's what I wanted to say, because I, I kept wondering, well, if I went a time zone over, could I see this better? You know, or if I went two time zones over, could I see this better? Well, the sun's going to go down whenever it's, those planets are visible to them, too. So um, it just works that way because God made it that way. Um, but here, back to Stellarium. Let me go back to screen share here. And... Uh, by the way, I've got loaded here Stellarium um, version 20.3, okay? Anyway, you know, when I'm doing profiles for people, I like to come out to this um, viewing point here when I can see the entire ecliptic path, uh, which is the 
on my screen here is the orange one. So if you then go over here and then type in a date and time, then this is what you get down to mine's on the bottom of my page, but you can click this and drag it to the top or where you've got less activity in it. And so, um, but this is today's locations, right? This is, this is today's. Um, so I tried to get these letters in the planets a little larger, but I wasn't able to do that. Um, No. Well, anyway, you'll be able to see them when we get in, when we get close up. But on this date, I'm looking up here. Saturn is here in Capricorn. Jupiter still is in Capricorn, moving this way. And um, huh. I got my planisphere flipped. Now we got it, don't we? No. Huh. Wow, Barbie. I'm looking <clears throat> here and um, Well, there's Virgo and Leo, so that looks right. Well, I know that, but I'm, excuse me. Okay, this is right. It's just that I got the, the planets are moving this way. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, that's normal. Okay. So there's, there's um, Saturn is right here. That's Saturn. You see, if you click on the object, it shows up over here. And then there's Jupiter. And then here's Mercury. Okay. Now, these things will show you along the azimuth and the right ascension and declination, the location in the heavens of where this is. Now, Doug, you were showing us last week how you could stop the time from moving. Yeah, you can. Well, that's the decrease time speed. It's that arrow that points to the right, right beside where your cursor is. Right now, there. Yeah. Okay. It stops that's good, time. too. Because then that freezes all these numbers up here and doesn't keep confusing you, right? So I want to show you something else, too. If, um, you know, if you got these things and you click up here, and it gives you all the details over here. Look over here at the moon. The moon has got the moon age is 2.0 days old. Waxing crescent. That means the new moon was two days ago. Okay, so you can tell how old the moon is. And um, but anyhow, you see as you go around here, there's Neptune and the sun. Here's Mars and Taurus. Okay, and um, Dale, that means that two days ago it was an occult moon, which means it was completely, completely black. Right, right at that place, there's one moment where it is right in that area, and then um, when the, the new moon sighted in Israel is a little bit different, so it'll probably be today. Well. Um, last night. But astronomically speaking, the new moon was two days ago because it's, they talk about the occult moon. You guys understand what the word occult means? It means hidden. Uh, so occultation of 
Um, it's whenever one planet moves in front of another one and you can't see the other one. It's a, it's a, it's, it's an occultation. Um, so, but good stuff, Doug, that's right. And, uh, you know, the, the note, I call it the no moon. Doug calls it the black moon. I call it the no moon, the no moon and then the new moon. Because for you to see the new moon, you have to see a sliver of it. In the no moon, you see nothing. Um, I'm always interested in the relationship between the sun and the moon and the times they rise. And um, I can pretty much tell you by um, what time the moon rises, but pretty much I can tell you what time it is throughout the night, just by knowing the shape of the moon and where it's located. And, um, but that's something that you get over a period of time, but um, from looking at the heavens and not just computer simulations. Um, anyway, hey, back to F4. Oh, back I'm sorry. to F4, your markings. Now your landscape, what this does is it allows you to choose the different landscapes that you can use. But down here is where you apply it. Uh, this menu bar down here, this little two things here, looks like two trees. If you type that on there, you can see what you can only see at that time from where you are. Okay? Because this blocks out all the horizons of everything that you can see. So now, if we were, um, we'll do it like this. So look at how the ecliptic path changes throughout the day. This is something I had to really figure out in, in, in looking at the heavens. Um, but for example, if uh, it's later on in the day, or you're looking at a different perspective, the, uh, the horizon where the sun and the moon rises and sets is fluctuating. So it doesn't, that doesn't always rise in the east and set in the west the way that we would like for it to uh, on that western and eastern uh, directional boundary. But uh, that's, the, that's the horizon. So down here, look here, down here, the little double trees things here. And if I unclick it, then I come back and I can see everything. Um, so back to F4, okay? Now, star lore is what I wanted to talk to you about because a star lore is where you choose the planisphere that you want to use. Now, mine is set on LMCI. You don't have that on yours unless you have been to our website and downloaded the LMCI star lore. Now, to do that... Um, Are you guys still looking at the Stellarium screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> so, under the Christological Astronomy drop-down menu, is that what you're looking at now? Yes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all the way down here, you see the... Uh, LMCI Sky Culture for Stellarium. If you click on that, it gives you the directions on how to download what I've got up here uh, on mine. And um, this is a summary of it. Um, a picture of our planisphere. And then the instructions that you need to follow to download it. And it works. And the positive proof of that is that I have it on my computer program right here. Now, you can, um, huh. um, you can change 
the zodiac that you're looking at. And the one I would recommend is the Western. Come on, buddy. Yeah. And it's quite similar to what ours is, aside from the fact it's got all 88 constellations on it. And ours only has the 48. And, uh, but ours then has some holes in it. And so not every place in the heavens had a constellation that, that, um, that God put there, but the ones he put, he put there. But when they started locating stars from diff in different locations in the heavens, they needed to have a constellation there to orient where the stars were, were, are. And so they added the other 40 through that, throughout the, the time, throughout the ages or more recently, especially whenever the, the exploration of the Southern Hemisphere uh, became more prone, then people started identifying more uh, constellations in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so then back to this F4 here. Oh, I can't do that from here. Um, why can't I do that from here? Yeah. So, um, but there's all sorts of different kinds of, of uh, planispheres. Here's a Macedonian. Let's see what a Macedonian looks like. And this is fun to just play with, you know? Pretty good. I don't know, you know, what that means, but I'm just looking at these different ones. I never looked at that one. Here's an Egyptian. And you can see the Egyptians still have a lot of accurate things within it. Um, anyway, back to the LMCI one, which is the one I'm using. And I could use the Western if it would be uh, copacetic for you to see the pictures that you can pull up. But anyway, um, and then surveys, and this is where all your tag-ins and add-ons in the, in the back is. Um, and so I don't, I'm not smart enough to mess with that section. So I leave it alone. Um, but primarily when you start doing bird sky searches, you know, you want to make sure your location when it is set for the right place for where the person was born. And then, you know, you got your day and time window. And then um, you should have your sky and viewing options pretty well set even now um, as we've gone through this. So, um, but here is your search window. These are configuration. This is a configuration window. And, um, this has got a lot to do with your ephemerides, uh, the information on Stellarium. This is where Pat Gleason has worked in this back end back, back here to uh, add our website through a plugin. So anyway, but you can read all about Stellarium on here. And it, there, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. And um, I think there's one of the, one of the founders is in, um, Syria. I don't know, but they're all over. And one of them's in Japan, but they all combined to do this free program. And boy, it really is a nice, it really, really is nice. So let's say we're going to look at Pete Wigger's birth sky. So when were you born, Pete? 2-3, uh, February 3rd, 1945. 7-15 in the morning. All right, look here. So if you block out the, come on, if you do this, you can type 1945 and it'll do that without trying to do the arrows up and down. What was the date, Pete? 1945, February 3rd. All right, what time? You know, 
7.15 a.m. By the way, you can set the Julian date. If you by, by accident click over here, set the Julian date, you can come back over here to day and time and click on the top part and it'll bring it back to the regular. How come this won't drag and move? Okay. Seven what? 15. Okay. And where? Dayton, Ohio. Okay, we're about there. All righty. Okay, so the first thing I look at is the sun. So you go over here to your search window. You type in sun. And the reason I look at the sun first is because it is the dominant light of the heavens. And everything reflects off of it. So... Now, if you, if you are in a situation like this and you're on a laptop or a cell phone, you can expand your screen by this way, or um, you can use your control buttons. This is what I do to zoom in on the location of these. And I'm looking for um, massings of planets and key locations. And so before I'll even start, I wanna look at the sun and I'm gonna go all the way around and take a peek at where everything is. And Mercury and Mars is in Sagittarius. Oh, all right, Jupiter. Okay, Jupiter's high in the head of uh, Virgo. This is a, this is a, what decade would that be? First one. What is it? Oh, um, coma. Coma. That's what it. does coma mean? Don't make me teach this all by myself. I've been teaching this to you. You <laughs> should know this stuff. What does coma mean? It means the desired of the nations. Okay. That's right. All right, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it means. And it shows an in, in, in incredible favor. Mm -hmm. All right, what does the moon mean? You guys just got your microphones off. Turn your microphones on. This can be class participation. I want to hear you say these things and answer these questions, please. So what does that mean? What does Jupiter mean? What's the Christology of Jupiter? In Virgo. It's in Virgo, but what does Jupiter mean? Mind for leadership. Leadership. Well, it's, it's everybody's leadership. He, uh, Jupiter is the Hebrew word tisdeg. It means the king. It's the king planet. And that is Jesus's planet. It might not be Jesus's star, but it is Jesus's planet. I assure you that. Look here. You see. You see close in here. Neptune is in here. Okay. Look up here. What's this? See What's that? Series. That series. What does series mean? The secret of heart. So series is that small asteroid <clears throat> that's not visible with the naked eye, but we believe that it was at one time the location of the planet X, and it's in the fifth position from the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and then number five, we call it Ceres because that's the way they named it after their Roman gods. The actual biblical name of this is Rahab. And it means to break in pieces. And it's used in, I think, three or, three or four different places in the Bible. <clears throat> but before the foundations of the world, this was there. Okay, so now look at this. So what does series tell you? Series tells you that where you, this is where you need grace to really manifest <laughs> the abundance of Christ in that aspect of your life. And um, 
But I want you to look at this closely here about Pete's profile. Look at this. Jupiter, Neptune, the moon, and Ceres were all in Virgo. All right. So what does Virgo mean? Well, it's, it's the first constellation on the ecliptic. And it shows initiation. So this shows that Pete is a starter. He's a self-starter. He's a leader. See that Jupiter high in the head of Virgo? That means he's a pretty smart guy, right? Mm -hmm. Now with, with the moon in Virgo, uh, this shows that he's, he's where he needs to be faithful, where he has great ability is in the Deccan of what? Which one is that? What deck is that? What, what is that? Well, it's almost between um, Centaurus and Botes, isn't it? Botes, yeah. Yeah. So, but I'm looking at where Ceres is underneath the feet of Virgo. Uh, I think what this says, Pete, if I can take a stab at it, you can hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to you, but you've had to really develop in your life um, to stay faithful to advancing the kingdom. I don't know that you've ever lost Jesus in your crosshairs, but as far as advancing the kingdom, you may have had to struggle to do that. Uh, does that make any sense? It does. I need to be careful, guard against being rejected, yet keep loving and pushing. I get that. I get that. Okay. Mercury and Mars. Because okay, so just remember now, anytime you want to, you can go over here to the search one and type in Mars. And it locates it for you, right? Yep. So, uh, okay, Mars and Mercury says, is in Sagittarius. What does that mean? What, what is Sagittarius? What is, what's the application? The evil characteristics fight. of Sagittarius. Wrestle evil, subdue. Right? An overcomer? Yeah. Okay, so what does Mars mean? Mm. What you're willing to fight for. That's the warfare of Yeshua. What Jesus is fighting for. And what is Mercury? Messenger. The messenger. Messenger. So you, you've got a powerful word against the enemy, and you've got a powerful warfare against the enemy. Now, which decan is this in? First, second, or third? Sorry, I didn't do the decans. Okay, well, what I'm saying is just relatively divided into three parts. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't think you have to have a protractor or a ruler, but. It looks like it's in the back third, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, so yep. what decan does that relate to? That decan relates to Drago. That decan relates to Drago up here, right? Drago being cast up, having his head stomped on by Hercules. So this shows subduing the devil. It doesn't mean that you're the dragon to get stomped on. It just means that your gifting is to subdue the dragon. And that, that could be in, in spiritual intercession. It could be with hands-on um, deliverance, a lot of different ways. But those are very, that's very, very powerful right there. So you've got Mars and Mercury. Um, these are in the same place that Jupiter and Saturn were during the great, you know, just before the, the big conjunction in December this year. But um, these boys are moving on. So have we seen all of them, Pete? So who wants to give me a summary of what this says? Capricorn back here, by the way, where the sun is. Right there in the middle. That's right on the cusp between Delphinius and uh, Aquila. Um, 
which shows, Pete, you got a little bit of both in you. It shows that you're a real passionate, compassionate, and you identify with people's um, problems, but you also have that ministry of encouragement as far as helping them get over their issues. Yeah, and that's, that could also be good. That could also be good encouragement for you and what's going on in your life, and that is for you to continue to be encouraged by the Lord that lives in you. You know, so it does. That's very true there. Yeah, and so here at the, you so you've got a very strong warfare, and you've got a very strong word and warfare against the enemy. What does that look like? Well, this is where you need the Holy Spirit, you know? And of course, looking at the rest of your profile gives you good insight, but- uh, Where's again, Venus, Dale? Pardon me? Where's Venus? Yeah, let me see. Thank you, Doug. That's what I was missing. It's in Pisces. All right. Okay, Pete, what this is talking about is mm -hmm. In this vertical band of Pisces, um, well, what do you think it means? Somebody help me here. Uh, passionate about relationships with people. That's exactly what I was going to say, and and that's that's uh, and 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 I know you for that. That's what you're known. I mean, I can see that in you, because Venus is the bright and morning star. What you're predominantly known for okay um dale i'm just really seeing a great picture of an evangelist here i don't know if that <clears throat> yeah. i really see that you're a fighter for people even this first band this first place in uh, pisces is the band and there and again it calls out that warrior in you and especially because of where mars and mercury is the warrior and the word and Mercury is right before it going into Capricorn. Man, that is uh, a great declaration of the um, of the beginning of a person's walk with Christ because you're speaking them into that new walk. You're leading them into that new where where Jupiter is into that new relationship with the Lord. That all initiation type of thing. Man, this is just a really great picture of, of a powerful one-on-one um, -on -one type evangelist person. It's true. Very true. I did that yeah. when I was working for the VA. Well, so what I do when I do these profiles for people, and since Pete is almost a person, I'll do it for him. It's just, <laughs> he's marginally an alien. He's really from heaven. You can see that. <laughs> um, is to give them a summary at the end. You know, this is one of the lessons you learn in, in biblical counseling. If you give too many people too much information, they, don't, they won't remember any of it. And so what I like to come back to is where the sun is in Capricorn and say, hey, bro, this is a this shows that you got a tender heart to really reach people and to be an encourager and to help them. You have the tender heart, but you also have the boldness to encourage people. And, you know, the Lord sends you into warfare to, to fight for people. And I think what Doug said about evangelism and seeing that with the moon in that vertical band of Pisces, horizontal band of Pisces, is good as well. But then you've got Jupiter in Virgo. That's huge. In other words, you, you're to whom much is given, pal, much is required. And uh, you're a gifted guy. And, uh, and you've, got, you've got strong leadership, too. So um, where was Saturn? Well, that was in. Uh, I never saw it. Okay, it's under the foot of Gemini. Well, here we go again. All right, so what Deccan is that? What's the first one? What's the first deck in, in, uh, in Gemini? Methus. Methus. 
That's the victim. That that shows ruling over the enemy. This doesn't show that you're going to get stomped on. This shows that you're the stomper. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So this thing shot got a lot of warfare in it, but you know, with the four, and you know, I'm counting Neptune as one of the the um, planets in Virgo, but um, you still got the Moon, Ceres, and Jupiter in Virgo, and that's a big deal, man. That is that's, a big that's that's that shows you know like apostolic or real real powerful leadership. So here's what I'd say in a summary, brother. And they're on all three decans, Dale. He's got Virgo covered in all three decans. He does, does he? That shows the kingdom advancer, the kingdom mover, the initiator, the leader, the go-getter. So again, I sort of look at things like um using the sun and the moon as, as, as multipliers. And I think the location of certain planets and certain constellations is just more significant. And I, but in reality, being led by the Holy Spirit when you do these profiles is the most scintillating and exciting thing I've ever done in ministry. And it, and, and let me get off the screen share so you can look at me. Um, you know, um, God has called me to be a champion of the gifts of the Spirit. And the earth for me is in Aquarius, in Pisces Australis. You know, and that's, that shows the inner secrets of what really floats your boat. And um, the Holy Spirit, I, just, I love it. And so, but I made a, I made a dedication and a commitment. Um, Yvonne, many years ago, when I was a young man, and I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I saw people that, that had had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they never pushed, they never pushed on, they never stayed after it, and I think a lot of this has just been personal revelations of Jesus Christ with me, but this is, again, this is what I'm saying, the heavens Tell me about me. The Bible tells me about me. The Holy Spirit tells me about me. I know, I need to know who I am. You know, um, last month, one of the teachings that I released to our partners is the three views of you. You know, how do, you, how do, how do others see you? How do you see yourself? And how does God see you are the three views of you. Well, the heavens tells you how God sees you and tells you how you should see you and hopefully how other people will see you. But it is the ensconced, indelible image that God etched into the sky at the day of your birth to give you these meanings. But listen, Pete, as you go through and reread these things, every time you go through and look at them again, you'll get a different, deeper meaning. Won't you, Barbie? Yes. That's just absolutely. the way it works. Am I right, Sue? Where'd you go? There are, am I right, Sue? Yeah. So we just keep after this stuff and do it. Um, I'm on a Zoom call now, John. Have a good trip, okay? I said, I'm on a Zoom call now. Have a good trip. I love you. All right, talk to you later. It's my neighbor's leaving town. He wanted to check in with me. You know how that goes. Love your neighbor. I'm trying to do the Bible here. <laughs> um, let's uh, dial up a birth date. Let's everybody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a birth date and um, let's do yours, Doug. What's your birth date, Doug? Uh, unmute, Doug, unmute. Working on it. There we go. It was it was being cantankerous. Dale, mine's pretty easy because it's all in one. one... I know it, I know it. That's why <laughs> okay. I wanted to do it. August 23rd, 1955. 
So, okay, everybody, um, we're going to go on break. I'm going to turn my screen off, and you can uh, fill in that birth date. And then we'll be back in a couple of minutes, and we'll start going over it, okay? So while we're on break, you can – I'll tell you what. Just wait till after break, and we'll all find it together, okay? We'll look at it together. I'll show you how to find it. So uh, let's take a little break here and be back in about five or so, okay? You might want to mute your microphones. If not, we can hear you as you're rattling around.
Barbara, can you hear me? Yes. I got a phone. I got a phone call during break. Okay. Could you could you and Doug maybe start doing this profile, Doug's? Yep. Okay, good. And then I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Thank you. All righty. So we'll wait till Doug gets back. Because I think he has his Stellarian. Hey, Doug. Did you happen to hear that from Dr. Dale? He has to take a phone call right now. Oh, okay. So do you happen to have your Stellarium up and ready to roll? Yep. Okay. Can you share your screen? I think so. Awesome. Hopefully we'll get everybody back here. We still have quite a few folks that don't have their cameras on, but great to see everybody, by the way. And as um, soon as Doug gets his, there we go. There we go, okay. And let's see. So you got your time already in there, your time? Yep. All righty. Did you already do your location? Uh, let's check that. Mm. Okay, I'm going to guess and say Charlotte, United States of America is Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's the only Charlotte in the United States. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you can look at the map and see the yeah, red and You can see that it went there, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Yep. Okay, and so... And I also went down here and I stopped the clock so you can see that it's two bars instead of the arrow. And it's... Uh, and now for some reason it says six and I don't know why I did that. Oh, there I don't know why I did that because I moved the place. <laughs> oh, maybe so, huh? Yeah, because okay. I'm in Texas now, and you move it, move it back to the eastern. It would be six o'clock. So. Okay, and so do you want to go ahead and start? Uh, okay. With, well, first thing we're going to do is find the sun. The sun is first. So there we go. Oh my goodness! Look at you. Right you look there at my photo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. I've right. got the Sun, Mars, Venus, and Mercury all in Leo. <clears throat> wow. And uh, um, three of them are in the same decan, <laughs> which would be Hydra, by the way. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can pull back so we can see Hydra a little. So there's Hydra. Oh, the right. lion is pouncing on Hydra, and this. So. Um, well, you know what it says, right? Does, any, does anybody else? Well, first of all, it's in Leo. Sun is in Leo. So what, what does that say Christ, with the Christological interpretation? Somebody? Leo. What does that mean? Somebody's got to know. What is that? Is that you, Jasmine? Leo or Elizabeth? Enforcer. Leo aggressive enforcer. warrior. Yeah, aggressive warrior, enforcer. Okay. What else? Always associated with Judah. Uh huh, Judah. Okay, so we've got the sun. And what's the sun represent again? Righteousness of yeah, sure. God. Yeah, right on. It's the righteous acts that Doug will do reflecting Yeshua in his righteous acts. Absolutely. And righteousness. Absolutely. So, so somebody give me a, a term or a phrase for Doug's Sun being in Leo, what would that be? So his righteousness is going to be as a bold, right? 
a bold, courageous, outspoken leader, don't you think? <laughs> And I know Doug, and <laughs> there you go, that's him. It looks like, um, I thought I saw Dr. Bell for a second. Yeah. A strong I've... prophet. Strong prophet, okay. There's Dr. Bell. Dr. Dale. Yeah, okay. I blipped up here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back. Um, look at the conjunction of the sun and Regulus. Uh, what does that say? I mean, that's, that's powerful. So I've Doug, explain, explain, yeah, expand that. Yeah. You got Venus and Mars. I tell you what, man, whatever Leo is, that's what Doug is. That's a lot. <laughs> Leo is the abbreviation for law enforcement officer. He's the king of beasts. See the symbolism here, but look at Venus and Mars and the sun. Conjunct with regular. Any of those in retrograde, Doug, do you know? I, you know, I should, and I, my retrograde program broke, and I just re-downloaded Stellarium, and I've been meaning to do that, but I haven't. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, and then Mercury well, look at, you see, but look at the difference in the decans here. So this is the first portion of Leo. This is relative to Hydra, Okay. Well, um, the sun is in retrograde around Regulus. Wow. I'm, I'm just kidding. The sun never goes into retrograde. I knew better well, that. that's true. That was like, I was like whenever I was at the motorcycle shop and the guy asked me to put it in reverse to check up my backup lights. So, <laughs> I'm going, I didn't know that had that. <laughs> um, um, but um, Mercury is in the back legs. That's in the relative to the location oh, yes. of Corvus. Yep. Uh, and that's where that's your sun is, I think. <clears throat> yeah, and Barbie's Barbie's Venus is there. Yep. Huh. Looks like we found a, looks like we found a common thread here. Um, <laughs> but that's Doug and Doug, I just I know Doug. I've known Doug for how many years, Doug? You can oh, do the gosh. math, you're smarter than I am. So, um, forty five years. What? I met you in 70... 75. Oh, 75. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. He's always been a leader and uh, and outspoken. But he's, he's, I tell you what, though, he's uh, he's really come on strong in the past years. I guess we all should as we mature. But look at Venus and Mars. That's amazing. I, I've never forgotten Doug's profile. Um but just to see that. So when you see massings of planets like this, I mean, you don't want to miss the obvious. Um, cool. What does Jupiter mean in the in the claw of the crab or in the opening of the sheepfold? See it right there on the right hand side of your screen. I can tell you what it means to me. It shows that Doug is a very protective leader. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, very protective. So Interesting for me, I have Mars in the first decan of cancer. And I'll tell people I'm not pastoral. The reason I tell people I'm not pastoral because they think you're supposed to be a sweet guy. If you're a pastor, and I'm anything but that. Um, and I don't think David was that way either. You know, I think when David had to kill Goliath, I think he made up his mind to go do it or the bear or the lion or whatever, you know, but, uh, but that's the way I see Doug's pastoral leadership as well. You know, that's not the, I'll pat you on the back in so much as I'll pat you down a couple feet lower, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. where's everything else, Douglas, in this thing? Uh, up there. Uh, this is really interesting. <laughs> um, I've got Saturn and the Moon. Well, I've got the Moon in the last part of Virgo. Uh -huh. When I looked at this a minute ago, I almost it almost split that line, but <clears throat> um, it's right in the last part of Virgo and Butes. And Saturn 
is in Libra. And um, Ceres is in the middle of Sagittarius. And what other planet is missing? Mars, Venus. Let's see. Mercury, Mars, Mars. 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 That's it. Saturn. Saturn. Jupiter. Yeah. Where's Saturn? Where's Saturn? Saturn is in Libra. Oh, right there, right there. Okay. Right there. Okay. Pretty impressive. All right, let's let's do Jasmine's next. Jasmine. Doug, why don't you drop your screen share and I'll pick it up if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. And thank you, bro. You're welcome. All right, Jasmine, where's your... Um, it's on 11th of March, 1975. It's what month again, babe? Jasmine? March. The month? March? March, yes. And the day? The 11. day? 11. 11, 11. Gotcha. Do you uh, know what time you were born? 10, 10, 34 a.m. Good. Okay. Uh. My computers. I just expanded it. Now I can't get it to shrink back up from my mouse. Well, there we go. Okay, so start looking for the sun, right? Okay. Yes. Oh, she's got a bunch of stuff strung together here. <clears throat> wow. Jasmine, I think you were born on the new moon. Oh, no, you were born on a full moon. No? The moon is, okay. no, it's 28. It's, it's, yeah, it's almost new. You could probably may see one last sliver before it went new the next day. I don't know. Pretty mm. close. Pretty close. Anyway, well, this is pretty revelatory. Um, somebody want to jump in here and tell me what they see out of this? Sun is an Aquarius. It's right between Aquarius and Pisces, isn't it? This is good that we're talking about this because yes. um, <laughs> what do you do when stuff is like this and, and when things are like this? Because, you know, there's no real dividing lines in the sky. <laughs> you sort of mm -hmm. have to know the constellations and where they start and where they stop. Um like if you've got a planet um, close to the edge of a constellation, you don't really know what constellation it's in unless you have some sort of whiz bang computer program like I have, like we have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but anyway, so when you've got um, a planet um, or the sun or the moon, it's called, I don't know if this is on the exam or not, but it might ought to be, it's called in the cusp. The cusp means between the two, the cusp, C-U-S-P. So in the cusp of Aquarius and Pisces, it's real interesting because um, <clears throat> the, um, one second here, let me double check this. In uh, Aquarius, I mean. You see, is the last decan in, Aquari in Aquarius is Cygnus, and that's the blessings surely coming. But look at the this outward band of Pisces here. This shows two things. It shows one shows some, someone very personable, like Pete's last profile, the moon, was it the moon that was here, Pete? Or one of them was it was in was out here in that vertical band. Um, but you see, but and I and so but there's a correlation and a junction there. Um, in between being the one to bring blessings and being the ambassador brings the blessings of the word and being an, a kingdom representative. And I see that about you, Jasmine. And I do know you, you're a good friend of mine and you are certainly, you are an outstanding ambassador for Jesus Christ. I mean, in every way, this is so you, look at this. So uh, look where Jupiter is. Jupiter's in the same place. I tell you something else. Um, this is in that outward band. Well, in that outward band is where um, how I say the farther out on the band you go, the more the more power you exert on the neck of the enemy. And it's right at the extension of it. And Jasmine also. Is a is a serious warrior. Um, hmm. You know, tell you something else about, about you, Jasmine, that I, I see in this profile because the Deccan that Jupiter is in um, is Andromeda. That's the middle one. I'm thinking it might. No, it's probably still in the band. But Andromeda shows freeing someone, and you are a freedom fighter. You really are. But then if you look right below uh, Jupiter, here's Ceres. Okay. And remember Ceres is that little constellation, that little planetoid that you have to use a telescope to find. But it shows the location of planet X at one time. And it shows where when you have great grace in this area, you become extremely powerful in Christ-like, and that is in warfare and setting people free. Huh. You know, um, so you guys don't know this, but I do that. Um, not all of you, I don't know if any of you do, but Jasmine works at um, the university, uh, Christian University. What's the name of it, Jasmine, that you do? South, uh, Christian Medical College. Christian Medical Christian College. Christian Medical College and Hospital she, of the Andes. She's in the nephrology department. She's a kidney doctor and a specialist. And so but she is an ambassador for Christ. I mean, oh my God, she's just incredible. So, you know, and these things should really speak to our hearts. And they should speak to you, Jasmine. And that is maybe warfare didn't, spiritual warfare didn't come easy to you, mm -hmm. but you had to learn it. But by God's grace, you become a dynamo. A uh, real powerhouse. So look at where the moon is, lest we forget this. And uh, wow, talk about a spirit-filled woman. You got one on here with you. And Aquarius, she's got the moon in Aquarius. And basically a new moon. Was the moon 29 point, what, four days old? Is that all this against 24? This is 28. Point four. Oh well. <laughs> it would look new to me, Jasmine. It would look new to me, but 
Um, but this is a very powerful portraying of pouring mm -hmm. out the Holy Spirit. And, and not just receiving it, lady, but you teaching on it and helping people receive it. Because you're pouring out, but look, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Look at the richness yes. of the Bible here. Lord have mercy. Look where Mars is, Doug. Barbie. Look at that. What does that mean? Somebody tell what that means. Somebody? Like right in the heart of the dying goat in Capricorn. Sacrificial. She's sacrificial. Exactly. I think that I think she would die fighting for you. Yeah. She would die fighting for you. Wow. And now look at Mercury, Doug, back in the tail of it. Stephanie, you see that? What does that mean, Stephanie? In the tail of the fish. It means new life. New life, Even though especially an encourager, right? So look yes. at somebody willing to fight and die for you, who's your doctor. And then they turn around and tell you, that you're going to be okay and to, and to give you those kind of encouraging words that's what our girl does that's what she does and not just for a while either she's been doing it a long time that's cool stuff gal i'm so glad i got a chance to do that and show that to you because you've been showing it to everybody else <laughs> you know so you know and i tell you something too guys there's a there's a level of um, let me stop this for a second and preach at you for a second. Um, <clears throat> there's, a <sighs> there's, a. it's not false humility to claim these things. And it's not pride. It's not pride. Um, and I think that this is how we should think about ourselves. And I'm thinking about this about Jasmine. Jasmine's a, she's a very quiet and beautiful hearted woman. And I'm probably just embarrassing her now. But no, this is the Christ that you become. So suck it up and take it, right? <laughs> And this is what people think about you. And so this is the way it is for all of us. So, boy, this is just a real get honest, you know, kind of time, isn't it? Jasmine, any comment? Thank you for your, those kind words. I'm so encouraged by reading uh, about myself, you know, I really got to know about myself by reading Astrological Astronomy and this profile about myself. And it is so, so true about me. I never knew who I am. But after reading all this, my profile, I really came to know who I am in Christ and what Christ sees in me. And I'm so thankful to Dale for introducing this subject to me. And it is so fascinating. And who's ever profile a hundred percent time I have seen that people have said that this is me. And uh, I have met Jasmine. myself. So read it again and again and I get so encouraged. Hi hey, Jasmine. There's a, a young man yes. in your church or who came in for one of my classes. He was one of my translators. I think his name is Samson. He's a real big, handsome guy. He speaks excellent English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Do you know who yes, he yes. is? Yes, I know him. Would you have him contact yes. me? He was going to take this class. He told me he wanted to take the first round to go around. Next time you see him, would you have him contact me, email me? Okay. Yeah, he's, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I don't have oh. his number, but I... I I'm sure Akil has it. From my pastor. You can get it from Akil. I'm sure Akil has it. 
So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You um, might be having. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. sure. All right, Yvonne, you said I downloaded Stellarium. However, I'm not getting the same screen nor sidebar functions. My screen shows a picture that looks like I'm sitting in my chair with the blue sky. Well, sounds like you're still in Florida. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Like <laughs> um, I guess I'm going to have to try to take it off my computer and reinstall it, but I did go to the stellarium.org and I, because I have a Mac, I downloaded the Mac version. Now this has happened on my laptop as well as my desktop. So I don't know why. Is that, well, um, Dr. Dell, is that that one, um, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's where the sun and the, the grass and the blue skies are showing. Yes, correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, go <laughs> on your, do you have the, you still have the program loaded up? Yes, I do. Yes. All right. Well, let me show you what to do. I think you're right, Barbara. Um, I can't remember the name of it, though. It's the landscape. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. So Yvonne. Um, if you go to the, take your cursor and go to the bottom of the page on the left-hand side, or mine anyway, okay, yes. and you go over to find those little two double, those two trees over there. Yes. You click on, you click on that and that'll take that picture away. Okay. So when I click on it, it actually now just gives me a blue sky. It takes the grass away, but now I'm just all blue sky. Okay. Well, look at, look at, a, then um, click on your date and time. So do you have a menu bar on your left-hand side of your screen? Oh, Did now it's pop. now it's showing up. Okay. okay. Good. Then go to the top of the, go to the time, which is the, what, the second one down? Yes. Okay. I see go that. Go to the time. And then change the hour to nighttime and see what you see. Okay. Um, okay, yes, it's changing it to night view. So you got stars up there now? Yes, I do. All righty. Okay. All right. If you need any help, let me know later, okay? Okay. If you're one of my spies, I got to take care of you. Yvonne. <laughs> By the way, Yvonne is one of my uh, information gatherers, fact checkers, and all this other stuff. She sends me, Pete. She's Pete. She's one of my. Well, she's on a prayer night on Thursday nights. You know her, so. But she's one of my. She's one of my information girls. Anyway, uh, there you go, Yvonne. So. Thank you. All right. Um, Quite an amazing profile there, young lady Jasmine. That's beautiful. That's really terrific. And you know, just interesting too, because uh, uh, her the the head of her church, Apostle Eric, is a, is a super close friend of mine. Him and his son Akil and his whole family. I ministered to Ludiana, uh, where Jasmine is several times. Uh, and uh, but boy. Look at the warfare stuff she's got going on, but how thankful she is to be in an apostolic environment that's allowed her to develop. You know, and uh, well, isn't it great uh, when you can really fall under the, the leadership of an apostle and get some real direction in your life and real assistance and help and not witchcraft to be putting you down. And so that's been, this is my sermon for the day. You know, I, um, I got kicked out of seven churches before I finally started my own ministry and realized that was what I needed to do. And of course, the last one I got kicked out of was the church I started and then they still kicked me out of it. So I felt like maybe church wasn't my, where I was supposed to be. I was supposed to be an apostle, not a pastor. So, um, but I just, um, I learned this from my profile. 
look at what has look at what it's done for you, Doug, to learn yours and how you've been liberated and your wife and all of us. So anyway, anything anybody else wants to say? You want to do one more? Shall we do one more? Let's do um who you want to do? I just want to have a question today. What is the meaning of full moon and what is the significance of that? Oh, you're asking about the moon? Is that what you said? No, wait. Yes. Say it again, Jasmine. Yes, what is the what is the meaning of new moon or uh, Okay. Well, I think both of them are rather significant. The new moon is more holy than the full moon. And new moons are are holy days. And they're very special days. And um, it would be like being born on a super Sabbath. <laughs> um, and uh, there were always celebrations on that day. So I'm sure somewhere when you were being born, there was angels partying. I don't know if anybody knew about it, you know, to celebrate the new moons. Yes, they did in Andy at that time. But uh, I have several um, men and women that I work with and, and help to mentor that do new moon fellowships each each new moon. And uh, it's a, uh, I learned this from ministering in Chennai. Um Gosh, what was that guy's name? Um, he was a policeman in Chennai and got seriously saved and became a pastor. And But he was still a cop. He just hated demons. And he and I really got along well. And so I went down with him one night. He asked me to do deliverance in his church. This is quite a story. Because I, I went down one night, and there was about 200 people there, and I said, I'm not going to do deliverance, and I'm going to do it tomorrow night. I want you to go out, out of here and go find people and tell them they're going to get delivered tomorrow night. I came back the next night. I couldn't get down the street. It was I couldn't get down the two or three streets away. I finally had to get out of the the uh, rickshaw and uh, walk, and God, there was thousands of people there. And then I realized that I'd invited all these uh, unsaved people to this meeting, to uh, go through deliverance and they weren't saved. And so I said, oh my God. And then the church was, was three walled. It was open in the back, but there was, and so I didn't have a back door that I couldn't run. So, but I mean, there was people everywhere. And I called the pastor up front. And this is, this is how I got to the story. I said, these people here aren't saved. I said, when they get, when these demons start coming out of them, I don't know where they're going to go. He said, don't worry about it. He said, just, just, just get them to manifest. That's what he said. Just get them to manifest. I said, I can do that. So I led them in some deliverance prayers and some proclamations and God, you know, pandemonium. If you didn't know this pandemonium means all the demons, pandemonios, all that it was pandemonium in this place. People started throwing up rolling in the floor, jumping, howling, rolling, I'm just screaming everywhere. And I'm going, I've never seen such a thing as this. But this pastor has a team of guys and women that they walk around and literally they would slap these people. And it, they wouldn't just, I mean, they would smack them on their head and yell fire. And when they did that, you could see the demons scatter out of these people. And I'm talking about when they scattered, they didn't stick around. They left. And uh, oh my God. so afterwards, I said, man. And he had, he had brought me down from the Apostles Conference to teach deliverance. I said, man, why didn't you tell me you had this ministry of deliverance? He said, well, I wanted to see yours work. I said, well, I'm the one that learned tonight. He he said, um, well, we built our huge church. They had a huge, huge church. We built our church by going down on the beach in Chennai and holding worship services on the new moon. And he said, demons are really weak on the new moon. And I said, and the Sabbath. He goes, you're right. You're right. They are. Those are the holy days that demons are weaker. 
And, pe- and, and I said to him, I said, I wonder if people ever wonder why Jesus did so many miracles on the Sabbath. Because it was the best day to do it. People were thinking about God. It was the best day to do it. So anyway, I'm just saying. But he said, and then people would come down because they'd hear there was a party down on the beach. He said, these people come down, they wonder what all the music was about. And we just had a great time. And, you know, we have food and everything. And, and he said, about one, two, or three, two o'clock in the morning, he goes, this praise and worship would drive the demons out of people. And they started laying over in the sand and just manifesting. We'd go over, cast the demons out of them. And they're saved here, still going to church. So all that in response, Jasmine, to your new moon question. New moon is, is a holy day. Hey, Dr. Bell. Yes, Barbara. I just wanted to give testimony to what you were just saying. And um, also, you are the one who started us here in Albuquerque about the New Moon Fellowship. And I have been doing it pretty faithfully ever since. And that's been, what, 10 years, maybe? A long time. And so every month, it's a new opportunity um, because it's a new biblical month. <clears throat> and I just saw the new moon last night. I looked for it by myself on a cloudy sunset. And I, I said, Lord, I know you're going to show me the new moon because he always does. And everybody's um, saying, oh, it's too cloudy. But I did see it after an hour. Um, I saw it. It was the Lord brought it right there in front of me. And it's very significant because it's the new moon sighting. Um, and now we count 14 days, and that's Passover. So it's really the first biblical month. So anyway, it's awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Dell, for sharing about the New Moon Fellowship, because it really has impacted my life big time. Let me show you something else here before we get off today. Um, you know... Sometimes um, we, uh, maybe you might be like me sometime and um, are looking for something to read for inspiration and devotion. Well, this has got the heavens today. This is our website. This is again it. And so here's the heavens today. So if you click on that, it runs our computer program and gives you the printout of exactly where everything is today. And it's a really neat feature, especially if you want to identify some planets and constellations. The sun is in Pisces, the moon is in Pisces. So what does that mean? What does that mean? I'm talking about astronomically. If you see the sun and the moon in the same constellation, it's going to be a new or a no moon. Yes. Why? Because because the moon is on the same side as the sun from the earth. Now, full moon is going to be exactly the opposite. So the full moon, when the sun is in Pisces, will be six constellations away from Pisces. So if you go Pisces and then you count uh, um, uh, Aries, um, Taurus, Alien. Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. When the moon is in Virgo, it will be full. Uh, when the sun is in Pisces, it'll be exactly opposite. So if you didn't know this astronomically, um, when the moon is full, on the full moon, the moon will be rising when the sun is setting. And you can tell how many days it is till the full moon by how, how far up in the sky it is. I mean, the sun, how far, um, I mean, as soon as the, as soon as the, the, it gets a full moon, then it, the moon goes into waning. And then you can look at the shape of the moon and tell what day it is. And if you know what constellation it's in, you can tell what time it is. But I, I love this stuff. But anyway. Mercury's in Aquarius, Venus is in Pisces, Mars is in Taurus, Jupiter and Saturn in Capricorn. So isn't that pretty cool? And it gives you a, a short message today and some exhortation. 
Um, since Pisces is binding the king of pride, be empowered today to rule over pride. Humble yourself under the hand of God. It pleases him to dwell with those who are humble. So I think that's a nice little thing I wanted to share with you uh, on the website. And uh, uh, while I'm here, and I'm, I got just a minute or two, I want to show this to you. Our star name catalog is the finest in the world. And the guys at Stellarium would tell you that without question, that it is. And um, let me show you a little bit about it. Um, well, we've got these listed for all 88 constellations, even the ones that, you know, for the purpose of um, uh, locating stars. But so if you click on this research documentation, This is Pat Gleason's uh, uh, book that he wrote dealing with the star names, Doug. And I know you wanted this. I didn't know if you knew that book was on there or not. But um, but these are, these are different things that are on there. So that tells you how he built this program. And uh, so, is it that fun? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. I don't know how to get out of it, though. There are some places we go on our website you can't back out of it. So, anyway, this doesn't work. If not, I'll have to cancel that. Okay. Um, any questions? <clears throat> I want you to please take note that the um, meeting next Monday will be on a new meeting code and a new passcode, and it's in the chat room. If you join us late or you didn't get a chance to write it down, uh, Barbie wrote it down that 881-9973-4039 and the 9353 passcode. So, uh, but we'll send you uh, a link to this recording and also a, um, these, these uh, addresses for the next one, for the, for the next coming up classes. So we'll be here next week. I want you to, um, let's do a, let's do, um, um, let's everybody do the same profile this week. Um, Okay, let's do um do Liz's. Let's do it. Come on, Elizabeth. When's your birthday? Twenty fifth July, nineteen seventy six. Twenty two. Twenty two of July. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Two five. Yeah. 1976. What All was right, the right. month? Sorry, Elizabeth. July. Elizabeth, how do you spell your last name, Elizabeth? Vargas. V A R G A T E S. I'll put it in the chat box. Okay. All right, good. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll do hers and then. Uh, We'll all get a chance to think about it. So I want you to divide it into decans now. Look at all the planets and divide the decans into thirds. And then try to give an interpretation of the decans. Okay? Um, okay. When, what is our time? What time? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Oh. And I was born in the, in the kingdom of Bahrain, Middle East. Of where? Bahrain. Spell it. I put it in the chat box. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bahrain, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, guys, we'll spend a good time today. I'm going to let you go a little bit early so you can 
enjoy some other something else, but I've enjoyed our class today and uh, we're going to be doing some more of the same things next week. Um, if I could do anything for you, let me know. Barbie? Yeah, Dr. Dell, um, did, yeah. did we need to talk about the examinations being yes. opened? Yes, next we do. Okay. Um, you want to? Okay, um, so according to a previous CA update that Dr. Dell sent, the um, examinations are coming up and they'll be opened. In other words, I'll be sending you on your email um, a link to um, a, click on and then you can start your section one of the examination. And there's 87 questions. And then uh, once you get that done, I'll send you section two. And so you will need a passing grade of 80%. And uh, so that's very doable. And uh, I do encourage you to um, be sure to study up on your notes as well as the eBooks that Dr. Dell has sent. Um, and then section two will have some things uh, from the CA workbook that we're working on right now. And I encourage you to also be sure to go through the crossword puzzle because there are some questions that directly rate, relate to the crossword puzzle in the CA workbook, okay? So we're gonna make the exam available through what week, Barbie? Starting next week. So that would be the, the 23rd through the 28th is what I had down. Okay, Come good. Notes. Well, then on the 22nd next week, I'll do a review. Okay. Okay, I'll do a review and we'll do a little more work at Stellarium. We'll do Elizabeth's profile. And then next week, I'll do a review to get you guys ready for your examination. Okie dokie. Okay. All right. Well, love you all. It's been a great time to be together today and uh, have a great rest of the one year living. It's brand new, never been lived before. <laughs> I'll see you later. God bless you. Thanks, Thank Dr. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Thanks, Dr. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Bye. 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 Bye, Dr. Bye. Bye. Bye, Susan. Thank you. Bye. Love you, Pete. Bye, Sue. Bye. All right, taking the plunge. We're out of here. Bye. Bye. Love you, Barbie. Love you. Bye, Jasmine.